This is the video for the phylum Nemertia. There will only be one video for this phylum. We're, uh, we're going to only take a cursory look at it, a very short look at it. These things we will occasionally see uh, around here, and I'd like for you to know what they are. Um, and they've got some interesting features about them that make them important for us to have a look at. But um, uh, they're very small, and so we won't be seeing a lot of these. But um, if you do happen to see them, then um, these are known as ribbon worms. And they come in lots of different uh, colors. But um, you'll notice that they're fairly flattened. They look a little bit bigger. They're obviously bigger than the platyhelminthes that we've seen. But they tend to be flattened as well as the platyhelminthes. And that has to do with uh, gas exchange. Okay. They're most common as tiny little strings living between sand grains, but they can also grow to large sizes and even live in the water column. They're usually benthic, but um, they may be the longest animals on the planet. Okay, so uh, there's one that's been estimated at 40, 40 meters or longer, um, and uh, it was one that was seen crawling through the sand and uh, um, timed. Uh, they timed it how long it went to, or it took to get through this um, one area where they saw it and um, and uh, then estimated from its speed how long it was it was uh, would have been over 40 meters and uh, that makes it longer than a blue whale uh, about a thousand known species in Nemertians but it's believed to be that that there will be at least twice this number yet to be discovered there's a, a URL on YouTube that you can watch uh, some Nemertian or a Nemertian and watch what it does in its feeding and uh, it'll lead you to more YouTube and other uh, resources to learn a little bit about these things okay so morphology that means structure they are triploblastic so these ones have a uh, mesoderm uh, bilaterally symmetrical and non-segmented. So these will be a little different than the annelids. All right. So if you see an annelid worm, you know it's segmented. These ones are um, non-segmented. Okay. Uh, there's another uh, video. Watch it sh to uh, show an the Nemertians moving. Okay. They have a through gut, so they have a one-way gut. Okay. One mouth and one anus and they have a proboscis which is we'll have a look at uh, next that's for prey capture and their skin is covered in a cilia and cilia this is another surface that we're seeing that's covered in cilia and sometimes cilia are used to expand the surface area for absorption but in this case they are um, very much like we've seen in other phyla like the um, uh, planula larva, they beat and they <clears throat> they help move the organism. So this is a one of the larger phyla that we'll see that actually uses cilia for motion. Okay, so they are used. They are covered in cilia and these mucus glands, and uh, so the mucus glands help them lubricate their way through the through the um, sediments. And the mucus often has toxins in it to deter predators, but some crabs have actually been seen cleaning the skins of the Nemertians before they before they eat them. All right, so feeding. All right, these things have uh, what one of the things that makes them really interesting is that they have these things called stylets. Now, this picture, you'll need to uh, slow down and have a quick look at this. You don't need to know all of these all of this uh, terminology. But here's the mouth, which um, is not right at the very front. Okay, so they've got this mouth, uh, which is either here or it may be it's combined. Um, so, but in any case, they have this cavity in the nose. It's called a rhynchocele sale. So R H Y N. So R H Y N. When you see that, like rhinoplasty, which is a nose nose job. Rhino is um, for nose, and then seal, C-O-E-L, means uh, cavity. 
Okay, like we've seen, uh, we've seen that a couple of times. And they have coiled up in this little cavity in their nose, this thing, which is a known as a proboscis, which is like uh, another word for nose as well. But on the tip of it, they've got this stylet, which is a dart. Okay, and so these things, when they find their their uh, prey, will just um, are quite amazing because this thing will come out and go harpooning into the prey, shoom, shoom, and so this retractor muscle pulls it back once it leaves it leaves this dart in the prey, goes back, and often these things will have multiple stylets, eight, ten, twelve, and so this thing will punch, 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 punch a whole lot of darts into the prey, and those darts are all filled with toxins, and so they will uh, poison the prey, and um, and inject the you know, that inject that poison, and then immobilize the prey, and then they can eat it. All right, so that here's the stylet coming out and poisoning the hitting the prey. All right, so they also may have. Um, uh, a stylet that doesn't have these, or they may have a proboscis that doesn't have the poison, and that one will, or sorry, they may also have a proboscis that doesn't have a stylet, the dart, but it just wraps around the prey, and it's got like a sticky uh, poison mucus on it. So one way or the other, they poison their prey. And then they either ingest it, or they... Um, spit out digestive juices and then and then sort of um, uh, suck up the partially digested prey. So they're pretty vicious predators. Okay, so they're dioecious, all right? That means sexually distinct in the adult stages. They have a male and a female adult, okay? And they have a lot of gonads and that are throughout the length of their body. And these um, produce eggs or sperm, and then they um, build these gonopores, which are again gona. Here's that. Here's that. Um, well, let's move that again. Sorry. Uh, here is that word gono, right here, which means um, uh, reproductive. So like gonads. Okay, and pores, again, we're seeing the same root there of pore, which means hole, so reproductive holes, and that's where the eggs and sperm are le are expelled. But those things are only temporary, and they only exist in the side of these, um, these Nemertians when uh, the uh, gonads are mature and they're ready to release the eggs and sperm. So they may congregate to spawn, uh, and they may deposit their eggs in a burrow or gelatinous mass. And here is a uh, big Nemertian orgy going on, with lots of them wrapped up around each other, and they are ready to uh, spawn. Okay, so asexually they're good at regenerating. Some they can uh, they can multiply through transverse fission. And transverse fission is, um, if you can imagine, uh, like slicing a, a cucumber right down the middle. Okay, so if these things are sort of cucumber shaped, if you can sl imagine slicing it the long way down the middle and then both halves of that cucumber growing into a full cucumber, the skin closing back up, that's what transverse fission, fission is. So fission is splitting in half. And, or it can be also called fragmentation, and transverse means the long way. So um, we'll have an illustration of that in class. Okay, and then uh, there's just another picture of a, a um, Nemertian. And here we go to the taxonomy that you need to know besides the phylum Nemertia are only these two, Anoplia, Anopla, so A, the, again, A means without, like asexual, without having sex. It's uh, anopla, which are the unarmed ones. They don't have the stylet. Those are the ones that wrap their proboscis around the prey and poison it through that sticky, po pro or that sticky poison. 
um, the mucus, and then the enopla. These ones do have a stylet, so they are the ones that inject like a bee sting. Okay, that's it for Nemertians.